Good morning, students. Let's take a look at our morning message. May 21st, 2020. Dear students, connections are everywhere. Oh, I think I need to give it a little more oomph. Connections are everywhere. Let's make a connection between Jefferson and life cycles. Mrs. Kilmer, you know me. I'm always trying to make connections. And I've got a house full of books. And guess what? I found a book that makes a great connection between our learning about Thomas Jefferson and our learning about life cycles, specifically plant life cycles. So this morning, I have this book for you. It's called First Peas to the Table. And on the cover, I see a little girl and it's like she's telling us, Shh, don't tell a secret. Hmm. She's got a packet of pea seeds. I see a, a pea plant here. Hmm. And I see kind of a little crown, a green kind of crown looking thing. That's making me think of St. Patrick's Day. Okay, First Peas to the Table by Susan Grigsby, illustrated by Nicole Tagel. Ooh, on the back, there's a blurb, and there's a picture of Thomas Jefferson with some friends sitting around a table eating some peas. Thomas Jefferson loved to garden. In the spring, he and his neighbors competed. That means they kind of raced against each other to see whose peas would be ready to eat first. 200 years later, Maya's class is having their own first peas to the table garden contest. Will a secret tip from Thomas Jefferson help Maya win? Oh, so maybe that girl's name is Maya and she's showing us, shh, don't tell about her secret tip. That's why her fingers over her lips. Oh, look, that's cute. Look, the end papers are peas. <laughs> A bunch of peas. First peas to the table. How Thomas Jefferson inspired a school garden. Inspired means to make you feel like you want to do something and give you the energy and idea to do something important. And I see a little pea pod with a pea peeking out and a little nickel. Hey, there's a connection to math to coins. A little nickel, five cents with Jefferson's face on it. And it's cute too how peas, they wrote the word peas in peas. First peas to the table. Here we go. Oh, I see a classroom in school. Oh, there's like a, a bulletin board with Monticello, the bottom of a Monticello poster, and these two girls are talking to each other. Every spring, Ms. Garcia's class grows a different kind of garden. In February, she announced that our class was going to plant a garden like Thomas Jefferson's. No fair, I whispered to my friend Shakela. Last year, they got to plant a pizza garden. Shh, Shakela replied as Ms. Garcia started saying something about a contest. So maybe Maya is talking and Shakela saying shh. A contest? What kind of contest? I asked. A first peas to the table contest, Ms. Garcia said. When Jefferson was older, he and his neighbors had one every spring. For our garden contest, you'll each be given a small spot for planting peas. She held up a bowl. The winner will be the first student who can fill this bowl with shelled peas. That means peas taken out of the little pod, out of their little shell. The winner will be the first student who can fill this bowl with shelled peas and set them on the table to eat. Some kids said yuck, but Ms. Garcia said that fresh peas tasted as sweet as candy and were one of Jefferson's favorite foods. If peas taste as good as candy, I'm planting a ton. Shakela said, let the great pea race begin. So there's Jefferson and his friends Oops. around the table. And this is the class listening to their teacher about the first peas to the table contest. I really, really wanted to win when Miss Garcia showed us the winner's crown. It was green and gold with emerald
emerald colored pea-sized jewels all around it. Thomas Jefferson, she said, called agriculture, that's the study of plants and growing plants, Thomas Jefferson called agriculture the crown of all the sciences. Be bold and experiment, Ms. Garcia said. Jefferson traded seeds with people around the world. Then he used his garden like a giant science lab to test which plants would grow best. I pulled a shiny nickel from my pocket. Jefferson was on the front and his home Monticello was on the back. This would be my good luck charm for winning, I decided. So let's go back for a sec here. It says Thomas Jefferson, I've got to stop and think called agriculture the crown of all the sciences. So that means like in those days of all the different kinds of science there were, the science about the stars, science about the earth. Thomas Jefferson thought that agriculture, the study of plants and how they grow and how you can help plants work better for farmers was the crown of all the sciences. Am I making a connection to how Jefferson thought that all Americans, because America was made up of farmers, of, of real working people then, that all of them sh were important, important to, to the government, important to the country, and he wanted to help them. The next day we made journals to record our notes in, just like Thomas Jefferson did. His garden book was like a diary with notes about everything he planted, and we learned a lot about peas. Jefferson said you had to have healthy soil to grow healthy plants. Compost made of plant waste that has rotted adds nutrients to the soil. We took some compost from the school's bin and mixed it into the garden beds. Okay, so here's a close up of their drawing of the peas life cycle from seed. So the edible pea, the pea that we eat when it's dry, it's a seed. If you plant it, it's a sprout. Then it's a seedling, brota, yeah. It blossoms. And from the blossom, as we learned when we were studying about plant life cycles, it takes a flower to produce the fruit, right? And in this case, the fruit is the pea pod. And then inside is the pea. Peas need eight to 12 weeks to grow. They like cool spring weather and compost rich soil. So there's a picture of the drawing of the pea life cycle. And there's the kids putting compost in the school garden. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and take the cover off, the dust jacket, right? That's to kind of protect the book from the dust because it's flopping around. Here we go. On Valentine's Day, Ms. Garcia brought in 10 different varieties or kinds of pea seeds. They had fancy names like emerald treasures, and pearls in a pod. Oh, it's like a joke, uh, peas in a pod, pearls in a pod. We each got a packet of 20 seeds of one variety, and then we had a trading party. Shakela ended up with two seeds from each variety, but I held on to the 20 I started with. Sweet Victory Peas. That name sounded like a winner to me. Ms. Garcia said we could get a head start by planting some peas inside at home and then transplanting them at school in March. But I was going to get a double head start because I'd found a pea growing tip in a copy of Jefferson's garden book and I was keeping it top secret. That was like in her top secret sign. Oh, she looks like she's really thinking about her secret. So there's some different kinds of pea packets. And there she is, maybe she's hiding. Maybe she wrote down the, the secret in her, in her garden journal and she's hiding it. At home, I put eight tiny pea seeds into a bowl of water. What are you doing? My mother asked, making pea soup? I'll tell you if you can keep a secret, I told her. In 1771, Jefferson wrote that he soaked his pea seeds for 24 hours before he planted them. The next day, I planted my soaked seeds and placed the pots on a sunny windowsill with my good luck nickel next to them. Four times a day, I checked on my plants and gave them water. But after two weeks and no signs of green, I dug up a seed. It was rotten mush from too much water. So I started all over with eight more seeds and less watering. I gotta say, when she said she was watering them four times a day, that sounded like a little too much. So there's Jefferson with his, writing his notes. And here is she with her pea plants on the windowsill. And here she's taking notes. 
Sweet Victory Peas started indoors and the day she planted and she's gonna keep track of when they have their first blossom, their first pod, their, and then when they're at the table. Hey, that's cool, that's like being a real scientifico, right? A real scientist and making observations every day about the progress of her plants. Maybe some of you are doing that at home. Shakela started carrying home a lot of books on garden plants and some strange stuff from the school's recycling resource room. What's all this for? I asked. Your peas aren't growing yet, are they? Maybe, she smiled, or maybe not. Are yours? Maybe or maybe not, I replied. Shakela laughed. May the boldest gardener win. I ran home after school to check my peas. My little seeds had started sprouting. I made a name tag for each pot. Grow faster, I whispered to my plants. As soon as you're strong enough, I'm moving you to a real garden. Oh, and she named them. Each one has a name. Oh, there's an alarm going off. Hold on a sec, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So we were looking at the names. She named her plants. Oh, all names that start with P. Polly, Pearl, Patty, Peace, Pickles, Poppy, Princess, and Penelope. So there she is with her friend Shakela. And there she is noticing that some sprouts, some things have started sprouting. On March 21st, the first day of spring, we worked on our garden's main beds, right? Beds are the areas where you plant things, not a bed where you sleep, it's where the plants sleep and grow, right? Like Jefferson, we divided them into three sections for roots, fruits, and leaves. But when we got ready to mark which plants went in which section, we got confused. Cucumbers and peppers aren't fruits, insisted Jacob, they're vegetables. So Shakela grabbed a science book and we sorted things out. Remember, Shakela directed, roots are foods that grow underground, like carrots. Leaves are leaves we eat, like lettuce. And cucumbers, peppers, and tomatoes are called fruits because they grow from a flower and have seeds inside the part that you eat. But those won't get planted until the weather warms up more. Wow, so that's making a connection to our learning about how tomatoes grow on a vine, or lettuce grows above ground, those books that we, that we learned, where we learned about all our different fruits and vegetables and where they come from. Roots, what, what do they call them? Roots, fruits, and leaves. So those are the three different kinds of, of plants that they're dividing up in the flower beds. The next day, I transplanted my eight home plants into my pea patch and I planted my last four seeds. Then I stuck in a whirligig to scare away the hungry birds. In the big garden bed, tiny ruffled lettuce leaves were coming up. Oh, so they planted lettuce somewhere else. I felt like a gardening champion until I walked over to Shakela's pea patch. It looked like a science fair exhibit. She had 10 different types of peas labeled like Jefferson's with numbers, and some of her transplants were twice the size of mine. When I saw the different types of trellises she'd made, I remembered that peas like some kind of support. That way they stay out of the mud and get more sunshine. All right, so peas grow up. Their vines grow up. And you can see the little, already the little vines kind of growing up the sticks or the trellises. It looks like she put in some tennis rackets. I don't know if that's to scare away birds or for the peas to also grow up the tennis rackets. <laughs> in April, we went outside every day to weed the beds and record the progress of our plants. Our lettuce was growing the fastest of all. I invented a trellis for my peas with bells that played soft music in the wind. Jefferson won a gold medal for his invention of a garden plow. Maybe someday I'd win a gold medal for an invention too. Oh wow, I'm making a connection to some students who said they want to be inventors in our last meeting. One sunny day I saw that Shakela's plants had little white blossoms all over them. I raced to my pea patch hoping to find some flowers on my plants. Penelope P had a blossom. I was so happy I did a little pea blossom dance. 
Shaquille and I sat down and drew pea blossoms in our journals. I wish I could draw as well as you, she said. I wish that my plants were as big as yours, I replied. Thomas Jefferson almost always lost the first peas to the table contest to his neighbor, Mr. Divers, Shakela said, reminding me of the story Miss Garcia had told us. But they stayed friends. You're right, I said, giving her a hug. But I still hope that my plants win. <laughs> so there she's doing her pea blossom dance, and there the girls are talking and recording the progress of the plants in their journals. By early May, I had lots of blossoms, and six blossoms had made tiny pods. <gasps> wow, so here she's recording the progress, and there she drew a picture of what the pod looked like. One day, the sky grew dark, and a big windstorm came, hooting and hollering over the school. When it ended, we went outside to check our plants. Mine were okay, but then I heard Shakela crying out oh no her trellises had tumbled into a terrible tangle it looks like you'll win now my plants are ruined no they're not i said i'll help you fix them well that's being a good friend on the 14th of may we had a celebration lunch with the first harvest of our lettuce and a bowl of fresh peas but the peas were not mine they were Shakela's, and she was crowned the winner of our first Peas to the Table contest. Congratulations, I said, you did a good job. Thanks, she said, I bet that your plants will be second. They look really good. Maybe, I replied, but it feels like I've been waiting for them forever. Then I went to check on my slow poke peas. Oh, look at how the class is having a fun time. Shakela's getting her crown. And they've also got some lettuce for some salad from the garden. My first pod, plump and firm, was ready to be picked. I plucked it off, popped it open, and tasted a pea. It was as sweet as candy. And I'd grown it all by myself. No wonder Thomas Jefferson liked gardening so much. From one tiny seed, a whole plant could grow full of flowers first, then giving you the sweetest peas in the whole world. Some things were worth waiting for. There you can see the little pod. Okay, and here's some more information about Jefferson. And it said, it, this is one thing I did want to read to you. It says, Jefferson wanted Americans to use their land wisely, planting what grew best. So he sought out hundreds of new plants, experimented with them in his garden, and asked friends to do so too, right? So that was part of the idea of making a connection to Jefferson and the idea that he knew that farming was what was most important for America back then, being able to grow things, grow food for people. So that's why he called agriculture, that's the study and learning about growing plants for food, as the crown, like the queen, the king, the crown of the sciences. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed First Peas to the Table and Maya with her secret about soaking the peas before planting them. And I'll see you this afternoon for our fun story.